Welcome to the first video of a series of short lectures entitled The End of the Calories In, Calories Out Theory. My name is Francisco Arencivia Albite. I am an associate professor of human physiology at the Universidad del Sagrado Corazón in San Juan, Puerto Rico. The aim of this lecture is to demonstrate that all cases of energy balance can be classified into three mutually exclusive types. The concepts and results discussed in this lecture are original and were published in August 2022 in the Journal of Theoretical Biology, and the article is of open access. As the results presented throughout the lectures are of theoretical nature, one may ask, can real research be done on paper or only happens during well-designed experiments? To answer this question, I now share a quote by the British mathematician John Hammersley that provides a reasonable response to such concern. What makes a house? Ten penny nails or blueprints? Is an opera the libretto or the music? Is an essay an exercise in syntax or an exposition of a subject? Is real physics done in a laboratory or on paper? The answer is the same in every case, namely both. And even to try to decide which component is more important is not much more meaningful than to debate whether for walking you need your right foot more or your left. Let us start by discussing what is the calories in, calories out theory, also known as the energy balance theory. At the fundamental level, the calories in, calories out theory is a logical system that consists of three principles or axioms that attempt to explain body weight fluctuations. The first axiom states that if the absorbed energy intake is on average equal to the expended energy, then there is no energy accumulation and consequently body weight must remain stable over time. In this context, the energy input, or calories in, is defined as the heat energy released upon complete food oxidation, and the output energy, or calories out, is also defined as the heat energy that gets released during all forms of metabolic activity and mechanical work. In nutrition science, this state is known as energy balance. As we will see in this lecture, all cases of energy balance can be separated into three mutually exclusive types. The second axiom states that when the absorbed energy intake is, on average, greater than the expended energy, then the excess energy accumulates leading to weight gain, a state known as a positive energy balance or simply a state of energy surplus. Finally, the third axiom states that when the expended energy exceeds on average the absorbed energy intake, then the body energy stores are reduced, leading to weight loss, a state known as a negative energy balance or simply a state of energy deficit. I now present a new concept that I call the VO2 deviation, which is defined as the difference between the daily molecular oxygen volume uptake, VO2, and the oxygen volume required to completely oxidize the daily absorbed macronutrient intake, where the symbol for the latter is VO2 asterisk and can be computed by the given formula. Now we are ready to prove that all cases of energy balance can be separated into three mutually exclusive types. First note that for each energy balance case, we can measure the daily values of BO2 and BO2 asterisk, which in turn implies that we can assign to each energy balance case an average BO2 deviation. Any deviation is either negative, zero, or positive. Therefore, all energy balance cases can be divided into three non-intersecting sets. The type 1 energy balance set, 
which is the collection of all energy balance cases where the mean VO2 deviation is negative, the type 2 energy balance set, which is the collection of all energy balance cases where the mean VO2 deviation is zero, and the type 3 energy balance set, which is the collection of all energy balance cases where the mean VO2 deviation is positive. The union of these three sets is what I call the energy balance space. In conclusion, it is now clear that all cases of energy balance can be separated into three mutually exclusive types. As we will see in the final lecture, each energy balance type leads to contradiction. This renders the Cavalier-Sin Cavalier-Sau theory as an impossible problem. Thanks for watching, and I see you in the next lecture.